Hey everybody, what up? Scuffy here, and today, uh, tonight rather, move that out of the way. Um, we're gonna go over try a little something different through the course of this week. I've been doing a poll on the Discord chat uh, for what players feel are the top five neutral cards um, of all of all the current cards out there, and gathering data, gathering votes. And it's time to go over the results, so let's get into it. <clears throat> now, uh, before I go through the results, I'll kind of explain a little bit. The 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 poll excluded warlords, uh, so it was just the cards that could be included in any decks. The troops, basically, of troops and tactics. Um, and I asked people to give me their top five, their personal top five, based off of, you know, rarity, uh, inclusion in decks, as far as how versatile it is. Um, would it be something that they would recommend players purchase in the shop? Um, how much impact does it have in the game state through the course of the game, as well as immediate? And uh, the results are pretty interesting. Got, I think, close to... Um, close to 50 different people, uh, which is, you know, really small when, through the, through the course of our community. Um, but when you're talking about, it's just, just through Discord and through the people who are checking in through Discord throughout the week, I, I routinely, uh, posted up what I was, what I was asking for to PM me or to, to, to and some people added me, uh, with, with their top five. And I would add those results into it and basically take into account and then rank them one through five. Uh, as the players rank them one through five, you know the one gained more points, the five gained the least points, and through the course of collecting all those votes, uh, came out with a list that we're going to go through today. Uh, it's relatively short. Um, I don't know if there will be some surprises here for some people, as far as for what they consider. Uh, but this is this is off of the collective from what I've gathered, and you know, let's talk about. It. I figured it'd be, it might be something kind of fun and neat to do. Uh, so the first, the, we'll start at the bottom. Number five comes from us, which comes to us from the Chaos uh, Faction uh, card pool. And it is, in fact, Artillery Strike. Artillery Strike gains number five. Um, and I'll tell you, number five through three were hotly contested spots. Um, so these are pretty close and then gradually they kind of edged out through the last day or two uh but artillery strike remained in there on a lot of people's lists it's a common uh it deals widespread damage to up to three targets and it deals a set amount of damage which uh, a lot of people find um uh particularly useful uh as well as the price it's for four you know what you're gonna get it can technically deal up to six damage across the board um it's affordable early in the game. It's useful at pinging those pesky, cheap stealth troops. It's useful for finishing off uh, a troop that's on the board as well as damaging a nearby troops or other troops. Um, and depending on how you time it and use it strategically, it can clear an entire board. Um, as you know, or it could, if you're lucky, you know, damage a warlord and clear the the, the front line troop that you need to hit, and then the one that you that you maybe just couldn't quite get to. Uh, artillery strike, defensive satellites, informant network, um, those are all widespread uh, damage effects within the chaos card pool with with their neutral. But ultimately, artillery strike was the player's choice for this. Um, so, and and I I believe I had artillery strike initially on my top five uh from set two um and with the changes that they've done to the meta in terms of updating some cards and then the inclusion of set three cards uh it wasn't on my personal list but definitely uh definitely worth uh worth the votes so artillery strike gets your number five player selection now as a common in set two if you see it in the shop, it's maybe not necessarily something that you want to purchase or spend the gems on. 
However, if you're looking to pick up some, um, I think through the course of buying a handful of crates from the Isfahan 5 crate, you should be able to get the artillery strike. So um, if it is something that you don't have, you're looking to add it to your collection, um, that's probably the best way to go about it. You don't really want to spend gems on common cards if you can help it, especially as a newer player, because you're going to get those common cards just through playing the game. Uh, playing events, opening your your normal pack, so you want to save it for the rare. So as far as like purchasing power, eh, scored low on that. But in terms of the effect that it has on the game, a lot of people include them in their decks uh, as just not quite a staple, but you know almost always an inclusion or worth considering. So there you go. Um, number four. Now number four comes to us from the Imperial card pool. Um, number four is Imperial card pool selection is in fact we're going to scroll down and we're going to scroll back up goldstone hunters goldstone hunters if you love gold if you're from austin powers or you like to hunt you can't go wrong with goldstone hunters um goldstone hunters have only seen one revision through the course of the game coming out um which dropped them from what some people reply back kind of uh dropped their standing as far as how they voted for them initially they were a 3-3 three, three. now they're a 3-2 uh so they did lose some points with some players in the course of that however they are a fast troop they are an infantry they are unstoppable uh, they deal three damage and they have a relatively cheap cost and there are so many uh, combos that you can do with that really especially game winning combos whether it's just from the world eaters throwing on a sweep in advance for just some up damage uh, whether it is the uh, sons of horus pumping up uh, with some some bane strike rounds doing some widespread damage there uh, back in the day if you had a bunch of mechandrites the cold stone hunters would finish off games left and right now Granted, that's no longer the case. Both the Mechandrite uh, abusage has been kind of toned down, and the Goldstone Hunters themselves now only have one shot, basically, with that two health. However, uh, Warlords such as Numian and even Kurs, to some degree, um, all have technically the potential to keep Goldstone Hunters on the table after they come out. Or if there's only a one a one health, uh, one attack a troop on there, technically they could kill them and stay out there too. So very versatile, very uh -huh. versatile card. Um, I I recommend I recommend it personally. I think majority of people recommend it. If you don't have at least one, pick one up. Um, they're not a staple as well as they used to be uh some people now opt for other options other direct damage options goldstone hunters might be replaced with the uh, seek and destroy if you don't have access to something uh better or just for you know just for a better troop type it really depends on the warlord depends on your card pool but uh as an epic definitely highly recommended um epic to purchase a Epic that you will always find a use for through the course of a game, whether it is being able to just to kill a troop that is behind a front line, to kill a troop that just deals a little bit too much damage that you don't want to hit with your Warlord, um, uh, to finish up the game, you can't go wrong. Goldstone Hunters is your number four uh, in top neutral card. So and that is by the popular vote. And of course, again, I will say the popular vote is only... 50 players who voted um, but hopefully you know if we do more of these and it kind of generates a little bit of buzz we'll get more votes in there and that can be fun in and of itself and I want to thank the people who uh, who voted because without those this 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 venture probably would have been like oh I got four people voting and it's probably not even worth talking about then but uh, the results were interesting um, so if Goldstone Hunters wasn't on your top five uh, you know, people still consider in their top five, and if it wasn't your top five because you don't know enough about it, uh, take a closer look at it. Um, so now number three, number three also comes to us from the Imperial Card Pool, and it is in fact Abandoned Supplies. Abandoned Supplies is in Goldstone uh, Hunters is your number three. Abandoned Supplies is your oh, i'm sorry band supplies is your number three goldstone hunters is your number four 
Um, so this was, in fact, uh, not on everybody's list, but the people who had it on their list rated it very high for good reason. Um, abandoned Supplies is a common. Uh, it's a relatively uh, cheap card in terms of cost. Uh, and the fact that you can play it first turn is a big, big advantage to paying on your deck. It doesn't go in every deck, but a lot of players do have it in their deck. Being able to draw a card is nice. But being able to reduce its cost by two is really the, the ultimate benefit. Especially if your deck relies on heavy four drops or six drops or five drops. Being able to bring those in technically on the following turn. If you abandon supplies on turn one and you draw the duke, you can play the duke on turn two. And that is a huge advantage unless your opponent has a jubok in hand right off the bat or some way to deal seven damage right off the bat, you have substantial board control. Um, and that's just one example. Abandoned supplies is a tactic. Uh, so it's not necessarily true, but its value is just, it's, it's, it's definitely valuable early game. Late game, it can be valuable too, just to the course of filtering through the remaining cards in your deck and gaining the card at reduced cost. So if you have 10 energy, odds are, Whatever card you draw, unless it's a 9 cost, you're going to be able to still play within that round. And technically, you'd be able to play that as well. I mean, 2 brings you to 8, and you're drawing a 9, you've got 7 energy left. You could do that. Um, and that, that's, I mean, there's a handful of ones I can think of off the top of my head. So, um, now as a common, again, to kind of go with Artillery Strike, definitely not something that... Uh, you should spend gems on in the shop. If you don't have enough to buy crates, I would recommend having at least one. Um, they're good to have if, if, you, if you have to go down that rope, but uh, again, abandoned supplies can also be found in the Istvan 5 crate. They're very useful for just about every deck. There's a few decks that do not include them, here we go, let's get back to the collection. Uh, there's a few decks that don't necessarily need to include them. If you have a lot of one-drop cards in your deck, you may not want to do Abandoned Supplies because you're not getting necessarily a full value. And there are those times sometimes where you play Abandoned Supplies and you draw your other copy of Abandoned Supplies if you have two, and then you play it again for free to draw another card. I mean, it, it kind of is redundancy at, at that point. Um, but... Overall, a lot of players who ranked it on the list ranked it very solidly or high up uh, enough for it to score and lock in that three position. And again, three, four, and five positions for a while there were very close neck and neck. And then towards uh, the, the closing votes, Abandoned Supplies really uh, eked, eked out the lead. So that brings us to number two. Number two in the top five neutral cards via popular vote on Discord. Um, comes to us from the Mechanicum card pool. And it is, in fact, Ambassador Melgator. Ambassador Melgator um, ranks up there. He has lost some standing through the course of the change to his ability, uh, which initially was return a troop to, in it, to, to a hand, to the player's hand. Um, now it is Astartes and Infantry. So demons, vehicles, and... Uh, uh, structures are no longer affected by Melgator, which makes them stronger, uh, makes him a little less useful. Obviously, his ability also cannot target um, stealth troops. But the value that he has through many, many games is, I mean, just so versatile. Um, you can use him on your own troops to, to return a troop that maybe has been jammed or that you want to play again. Because of the uh, because of a rally effect, um, there's just so many combos that you can do within the course of that. Uh, you can use him to return a, a beefy front line to your opponent's troop, or that big eight drop that they that they threw down there that you don't want to have to deal with, and you've got some other cheap guys to throw out on table and and, and to to reclaim board advantage. Um, even through the course of taking a, a unit that your opponent has buffed up several times over and is getting ready to attack and if they have not had the chance to use it you can Melgator it goes back to their hand it loses all those buffs um, and he's he's a two cost that is a that is a easy 
uh, effect to pull off throughout the entire game, uh, and he just gains steam and clutch play usage as the game progresses. There have been many a game, many games, especially if you know your opponent or you know the faction that you're facing, their card pool that they use, where you hold on to a Melgator until they throw out that big baddie that you knew that they had, and then you use Melgator to bounce it back. Um, nine times out of ten, they're probably expecting that you have Melgator. Uh, so they're doing some baits maybe through the course of the game, depending on if they have anything that they can throw out there. But if, they, if, if they're if they not expecting it, and then they spend all that energy on a troop that can go back up to hand, um, it swings the advantage very quickly. Uh, I've always condoned or endorsed Melgator, um, even with the the nerf that he received, and, you know, I, I, it, was, it was necessary, but it's still a very powerful effect. As a legendary, um, he's definitely, he's definitely one I would recommend picking up. Uh, I've always recommended picking him up. It, it makes it hard. Um, when you've got 1600 gems only and you don't have enough to figure out like okay what's what's the best buy and you've got to wait a week two weeks before something that looks appealing shows up in the shop well if you see Mugator in the shop you know that that's something that you're going to use you may not have him in every deck I've got him in 99.9% .9 of my decks um, but you always always find a use to use him even if it's just a late game or if it's just a one one troop swing um, I think there's been rarely a time where I have regretted playing Melgator or including him in my deck. Um, and I don't think you would either. His stats don't do him justice. It's really that rally effect. And, and to be fair, you can buff that up. There's, there's definitely, I mean, with, on a, on a five energy, uh, with perfection, you could make him a three, five and gain his rally effect as well. So, uh, there are a lot of, lot of ways, a lot of options. To enjoy Melgator, I I like I liked uh, using Hidden Run with the Raven Guard on Melgator, returning a infantry or starties to their hand, Hidden Running, getting Melgator back in my hand, just endless Melgators uh, for days. Um, so solid ranked number two. I was actually uh, interesting because through the course of the voting, he started out very low. A lot of people. Uh, we're, we're voting him low or, or not including him on the list. And through the course of time, again, kind of with those bottom three spots, uh, he picked up steam and, and then cinched in the number two, uh, the number two position. Now, the number one position may or may not be a surprise to people, um, but it was with a solid, solid decisive scoring. Jubox Starsight, number one on just about everybody's list i would say probably probably 80 percent of the players ranked jubak as a number one or two um in in their terms of their list and for good reason for good reason um now he has only seen one revision that i am aware of it, during beta he was a two five he's now a two four um and gosh could you imagine how how brutal him being out there for an extra turn could be his ability uh, varies through the course of the game. It depends on your opponent. It depends on what they have in their deck. But he's guaranteeing you to get at least one copy of a card in the opponent's deck into your hand. And through the course of random gaming, through the course of just having card advantage, that ability always seems to pay dividends. Um, you can see it in several game replays that I've had out there where I've gotten a Jubak. The card that I've gained from him has never not failed me in the same way. Uh, there have been several games where I've had the opponent with the Jubak, and their card that they've gotten has never failed them. Uh, take a look at my Lodge Wars, Lodge Wars round uh, three, I believe it was against um, against who did I face? Lodge Master. Who was it? Lodge Master. Fulgrim. Fulgrim was the Lodge Master from uh, Excalibur. Yes, that's who he faced. And man, just he jubaked but in both games, just the killer card. So you, you you have to you have to love to hate it and you have to love to love it when it works for you as well. Um Jubox Starsight is definitely, definitely a must buy. 
um, not just because of this list, not just because of this ranking, because of the value that he adds to your game. He becomes a prime target over your Warlord at times, or even if you can combo him with several other troops, um, your opponent, nine times out of ten, is going to deal with him first because of the threat that he poses. Nobody likes having their tricks used against them, especially if it's early enough in the game where all the good stuff is still in their deck. Um, I mean, how, there's been ample times where I've drawn a, a Spirit of Vengeance or Pride of the Emperor, uh, you know, from my opponent's deck or Cade's next, uh, you know, and I get to use it before they get to use it sometimes. So that's just insult to injury. Um, he's, he's a solid price. His stats are pretty basic, but the power that he brings is guaranteed. It doesn't, it's not a relentless effect. It's at the end of your turn effect, so you're going to get value from him right from playing him um and it's not to be uh not to be underestimated not to be underestimated for sure um everybody seems to rank him very high and i i myself rank him high um he wasn't my number one but he's definitely on my top five for sure and uh, i think it's warranted um now some honorable mentions that's uh, with him being number one and i mean it was oodles above number two spot in terms of, of the value of the vote that he received. Um, as far as some honorable mentions, um, one card that kind of got eked out there towards the end was the Firewalkers. Uh, Firewalkers was a good honorable mention. Um, just dropped out of the standing store close to the end of the votes um, as, as they kind of came on here. Uh, it's got a great rally effect and the fact that it's stealth and a vehicle and it's a 5, and it's a 4 health. It's got all these things going for it. The 5 cost may seem high, um, but the value that they can add to the board is both immediate and is almost a given on the next turn, unless your opponent is lucky with a defensive satellites or they drop a, an anti-stealth card and then follow it up to eliminate these guys. Um, you're going to see the, them basically gain... Do at least plus one damage on that turn, plus the five, and whatever else you can capitalize with. And then also, um, I would probably say, and much further down the line, but still, uh, honorable re uh, honorable mentions tied f in a, in a three way tie. Actually, uh, is it three? Yes, three way tie is Pi Alpha Fifty Two. Which, I mean, if you've got a aggro or a face attack warlord. Um, or you just need that extra health sometimes. These guys are great, but as the game has definitely evolved with a stun being a big factor with the Alpha Legion, that text is even more important, um, and their cost is good. Their stats may not speak highly, but it's their rally effect is really what, what wins them. It, uh, it's a three-way tie with Pi Alpha and Skatari Protector, uh, another Mechanicum troop who's got a great rally effect. That, now, they were actually edited to gain this as a rally as opposed to a Relentless. I believe it was a Relentless initially. Um, or it was when it's, it was a Backlash. That's what it was. It was a Backlash uh, effect. Now it's a front line. It's got a rally. And it's going to get rid of a random enemy with stealth. And sometimes there's only one enemy with stealth on board so you know who's losing it. And uh, finally, last but not least, in the three-way tie for honorable mention, uh, Sabotage. And I've gone on and on about this in my uh, recruit level videos. It's just an answer to so many things. It's a cheap card. It's a rare. Uh, it's an entry-level set rare to begin with. So you you have a high chance of getting it as a newer player. Um, and just jamming a troop. Sometimes people don't expect it, or they, they it really ruins their day when they're banking on uh, building a combo or using an ability over and over and over again. Um, sabotage can just swing it. So those are your honorable mentions um, for the, the, the voting. Now you might say, oh, that's a top nine, but they, these guys technically don't rank. I'm not giving you their scores, uh, but I will say there was a three-rate tie there for the end. Uh, Firewalkers just kind of slipped into that category as well. Um, but the results were good and varied. I mean, it was, uh, geez, I think I had about 20 different cards, at least, uh, named and mentioned and voted to some degree from players. See, these five here, no, I think it was more like 25, 25 or 30, um, which was pretty good. Pretty good. It, 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 it makes the results vary, but at the same time, it, it, it broadens the, uh, the, 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 the knowledge from the players out there. And these came from all levels. Um, 
all from players who are unactive on Discord, but uh, some who are high active, uh, top 50 players. Some of them are, you know, just batting around in, in Mars or in uh, on Calth or Prospero. So, um, and some of them are newer players who maybe don't have the experience or who have not yet had some of the legendaries, the Jubak or the Melgator, to, to properly say that they really love this card. Um, and it was just personal top 50. So it was a very neat project. I kind of ran it through the course of the week to see what people thought, what they what they want to see, and, and uh, kind of make a, make a video about that. And I think I'd like to try that again in a few more weeks and come up with a couple other topics to kind of, you know, for discussion and get people thinking and get people's feedback because everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. Um, but sometimes it's neat to see how the opinions ranking compared to each other you know if everybody has the same opinion then maybe there's some credit to it and i think there definitely is some credit into these top five i definitely agree um so yeah so there you go anyways uh hope that was some interesting f food for discussion uh food for thought discussion to be had um, if you're not on Discord, I recommend getting on it because we've got a great player community out there. There's a lot of chatter and talk. There's a way to meet contacts in lodges if you don't have a good lodge. Um, I've mentioned this before, I think, in one of my videos. Um, but if you don't have Discord, if you're at least on some other uh, player base, communication, media, social media, I guess, device uh, or application... Um, then, then more merit to you because that's really it, it helps you understand more about the game um, and hopefully it helps you put get in touch with players out there who can help you uh, because there's not a whole lot of negativity uh, from what I've seen in the community which is good and I think it's better because we need you need players to make the game continue uh, if, if the players don't want to play then the game dies and then we all stop having fun and I don't want that, and I don't think you want that either. So um, with that being said, uh, thanks for tuning in, and keep playing Legions. We'll talk to you later. All right, bye.